The Girl with Seven First Names, a novel written and read by James Logan. Cover design by Casey Wilson, edited by Jessica Robbins. Prologue, Fate After Breakfast. They were six, four women, one teenage girl, and one little girl, all with no memories and no experience of any kind. They had no parents, no place of residence, no friends, and no possessions. Their ideas and interests were programmed into them. They had unique identities, but they weren't responsible for developing them. This was the first place any of them could recall ever visiting, and the other five were the only people each had ever seen. They had knowledge, desires, opinions, complete and distinct personalities, each perfectly unique from the others. Not one could tell how she knew what she knew or why she was who she was. Each had only one thing in common, and that was the game. They sat at a small wooden picnic table in the middle of nowhere, and not like lost on the highway somewhere in an endless field of wheat or deep in the mountains nowhere, literally the middle of nowhere. The space around them was an abyss of white, above, below, all around. There was ground, but only in the sense that the metal chairs the women sat on weren't falling, and there was sky in the sense that there didn't seem to be any kind of ceiling. On the table was a variety of very tasty-looking pastries, muffins, bagels, fruits, juices, milk, and coffee. The women ate and drank their breakfast together, three on each side of the picnic table. Each wore a paper name tag just below her right shoulder that said, Hello, my name is, and her name. On one side sat Tracy, a 16-year-old brunette wearing a pink sleeveless top and a matching miniskirt. She had a wide grin on her face and bright, wide eyes as she ate a plain bagel which she had broken up into fourths. At the rate she nibbled at it, it was clear she probably would eat only one of the four pieces. Laura sat next to her, a tall 20-something with a thick Amazonian build. She had already had two muffins and was biting into a partially peeled banana. Her eyes shifted from one person to another, studying each, looking for any sign of weakness or uncertainty on the part of her opponents. Then there was Crystal, another girl in her early 20s. She was petite, had short blonde hair, and she kept looking down at herself and then at the others as if afraid someone might tell her she was in the wrong blank white void and kindly ask her to leave. She had a muffin on her paper plate but hadn't taken a bite yet. She might not even have liked muffins, but had probably only taken one because it was the item the majority of the group had selected. On the other side of the table was Kay, a tall redhead, middle-aged, who sat up with excellent posture and was evenly buttering her plain muffin with a plastic knife. She was even-tempered and seemed not to have a care in the world. It was difficult for anyone watching to tell if she was even aware of the others in the room. Next to her and across from Laura sat a woman named Sandra with red fire in her eyes, a thick, muscular woman with wild, red-orange, unkempt hair. Her age was impossible to tell, certainly older than Tracy, but beyond that was anyone's guess. She ate her muffins and strawberries quickly and methodically. Slice, bite, chew. Slice, bite, chew. Her eyes shifted from one girl to the next, much like Laura's, except she looked like she might pounce at any of them at any moment. And finally, there was Alicia, a little brown-haired girl no older than eight who slowly nursed a carton of orange juice. She looked positively terrified of everyone. After they had been eating in silence for about half an hour, Kay stood up and addressed the group. She was holding a mysterious white envelope with gold writing on the outside. In a calligraphy script, the writing said, To the six, best of luck. You know what to do. I don't know how I know this, Kay said, but I'm supposed to read what's inside. She spoke slowly and professionally, as if she addressed the public for a living. She pulled open the envelope and revealed a card folded in half. She unfolded it and read, you each hold the power to prove who is the greatest. We leave it to you to settle the dispute. No pressure. Is that a joke? Laura asked. Crystal chuckled nervously. I thought it was kind of funny. Sandra's animalistic gaze turned into a demonic smile. I'll be the only one laughing when this is over. I mean, when you're all, you know, dead, and I'm not, and I win. This isn't about killing each other, Kay said. We all know the rules. 
and we don't really know what exactly we're all capable of either, or even if we can die, said Crystal. She looked for approval from Kay and smiled when Kay half-heartedly glanced in her general direction. But if we can, I imagine accidents will happen, Sandra said, (laughs) just saying. Rules are no rules, Laura told her. If you try something, it'll be the last chance you get. Their eyes locked and they froze in what could have been a century-long staring contest. I don't want to be here, Alicia said. Do we have to do this? I don't think I can do this. You guys are like a cosmic daytime soap, Tracy said. I don't know why I know what that is, but that's what you are. Seriously, lighten up. Eat more muffins. We got one purpose. It's in all of us, so let's just get out there and play the game. No use, like, crying or whatever. Didn't figure I'd be with Miss Pom Pom on anything, said Sandra. But I agree. Let's do this thing. They all agreed, some more hesitantly and some more hastily than the others. With no past behind them and only the contest ahead, they had no choice but to move forward. Kay opened a small silver box in the center of the table. Inside was a round red button. See you ladies inside, she said, and pushed the button down with both hands, one pressed on top of the other. Six round, swirling vortexes opened, each dozens of feet in diameter, creating an array of colors all across the spectrum. They completed a large circle around the group. Each player was required to step into a different portal, and not one knew where she would end up. This was the first of many rules they all knew, with no idea as to where that knowledge had come from. And there was also the cardinal rule. With the exception of their opponents, they were not to speak of the rules or the game to anyone. The six got up from the table, proceeded toward the portals, and though all completely different in every way, they each stepped blindly and obediently into their destinies. The game, the most important game to ever be played, had begun.